Kabbalah for Complete Life Management Chapter 11 Rabbi Mikhail Ben Pesach Portnar Let money go and it will come to you. Money is only an object. Money is the manifestation of all the evil in the human being and the product of the uncorrected humanity. It doesn't have any agreement with the inner world and the longing for money is one of the most difficult aspects to correct. Our dwellings, wishes and deeds are food for the evil. It is very important to recognize your thoughts before they have become wishes. You are in time to recognize your thoughts even before they have become true desires. Evil sticks to it and is powered by self-love, which is doing its best to enjoy illicit, unclean things. And there is another thing you have to be aware of. The evil can clothe itself with the cloth of the good. Now you make concessions, and you get the feeling you have overcome something, but then it becomes subtler, as subtler such as money. What is wrong with money? You can give it to the poor. Money wants to conquer you and make you its slave. If we want to be one with our inner, we have to disconnect ourselves from the subject of money. To earn money is not wrong. The problem lies in the value to become attached to it. And this will bring you no fulfillment. This is a very serious problem. To give money less priority is the first thing you have to do. For many of us, it is easy to do dangerous things to get money. Sometimes the earning of money can become more important than life itself. It is the evil within us wanting us to dwell and give attention to the shadows, to the non-existence. Don't feel minor if you lose some money. When you do so, you are living in the past or in the future. I will, I will, I will. But all this doesn't happen in the now. When money is your master and savior, whom do you need then? And this master says, money is freedom. But of course, we don't have to go the other way to poverty. Never break the evil because there will be the day you are in need of the evil. No one can come to fulfillment without his own evil. Around the head of, your, of every person is a circle of light, and there has to be permission for the light to enter. Constantly the light is pushing because the light wants to enter you. This is the stimulation of your personal development to bring you to your goal. Give permission to the light to enter you. This is the work we have to do. When a person dwells, he falls down to the unclean wishes and forces. The salvation is in your aura. When someone is, for instance, addicted to money, he uses his aura for his unclean wishes, till the moment nothing has left around his head. It is said, evildoers are dead during their life. This means the hour has gone. Nothing can nurture them. Of course, from the outside we can see rich people, but from the inside there is nothing left. You can see them as mummies. Only the material give them the feeling they are alive. When you invest in the material, you will receive the material. But this is not the reason why you have your hour, your true light. When you're dead, you're property goes to others, and you won't see anything of it. The account of the evildoers consists of their dwellings. Where is true love? There is no money. Connect your money with your, with your well-being, meaning let go of the money, and free your heart. Then you will make money. To be a fool can be very important. What does this mean? How can you come to your wisdom without having being a fool? We learn from the mistakes we have made, richness through poverty. When you dare to make mistakes, you are a human. We only can learn through the opposite within ourselves and in the world to come to the understanding and to make it our way. Evil is part of our existence. So, we are... So, why are we doing nasty things? Then feel mercy, and at last we choose the good. Isn't the outer reward greater? Remember, when a sinner comes to remorse, he is in a place where no saint can come. True remorse receives the highest reward. If you think, I have been for 40 years a good person, you will achieve less than he who comes to true remorse. The sinner, he who receives egoistically, breaks everything, and he comes to the deepest point within him. And when he can crawl up on his own, his reward will be tremendous, and he can achieve the crown of the light. We have the power to exceed the greatest saint. Carry, our, carry your sin. Don't be afraid of the wishes. Have them as much as possible. Be greedy for the wishes of your friend. And if you have enough, if you have enough strength, even the wishes of the enemy. Till the moment you can carry all the sins of the world. The more wishes you have within you, the more work you have to do. 
And the more work you do, the deeper you will come within your inner. And the deeper you can come in contact with your inner, the more light you will receive. There is a law of the universe. The light only gives what is necessary. If you have small wishes, you receive the light according to the wish you have, and the other way around. When you are pleased with yourself because the account is satisfying, you have a wonderful job, a family, a nice house. What do you need more? No one will bother you. You have found your master, for example, the master of money. But when you live in the now, the evil can't get any grip on you. With affirmations or with thinking positively, you are the only, you are only building air castles. For the time being, it may be okay till the moment of the explosion. Faith above reason. A good businessman always thinks, how can I make myself small towards the client? This can seem as weakness, as a trick, etc., but it is only a variety of the same subject. When there are questions from your earthly understanding, you can go on endlessly and achieve nothing. A question has to come from your inner, from your inner shortness to understand the control system of the universe and to justify this system. Say, for example, I don't have the strength to understand yet. For example, you can't understand or accept why an evildoer does do bad things. There is only one solution. Go above your reason. Faith, have faith that goes beyond your reason. When there is no justification of your hire according to the evildoer, how is it possible to justify the control system? You should not wish to understand this inside knowledge. To forgive another man is a result of mental reasoning, moral or psychological. To feel yourself nice, calming your earthly consciousness. It has nothing to do with your inner work, but you only blunt yourself. This forgiveness acts as taking doses of drugs, alcohol, etc. Instead, trust the high operation system that everything works perfectly and for everything, for every earthling, to the same extent without exception. If you're ready for it, then the method of Kabbalah will raise you up and give you all that you deserve. After all, nothing descends to you that you didn't awake and didn't arise beforehand. War is only a reflection of our inner condition. Don't let yourself be misguided because it is my reaction. All the seeming misery is my reaction, is my problem. Try to see the absolute joy, otherwise there is shortness. As long you can't justify the control system of the universe, this is your work. Accept it. Everything is good and does well. This goes beyond the outer being. Now you understand what you have to, what you have to go beyond, your reason. Your intelligence is only a stand in the way when you walk the path of the inner. You can make use of it, but for the inner work it is an obstacle. You can have a kick from it that is satisfying your ego, it is something macho. You have to overcome the wish to be intellectual. You can learn and learn and still have no understanding of the true reality. The intellect is a fragment of the whole picture. The truth is simple and genius, but the intellect covers the truth. When you're tiny, but you can go above your reason, you are greater than he who is intellectual. Even the Kabbalah method is simple to understand if you make yourself receptive. Even misery is useful. In our society, we recall every year certain events, ceremonies, etc. Inside the earthly mind, things can be combined, the events of the past and present. Huma humanly, it's wonderful. After all, we enjoy things, but still, earthly mind, morality, are inventions of our ego. What we do is only for our ego. The ego loves it. See how good we are. We think it is good, but it is only a cover-up. It is a selective way of being sensitive. Don't cry when someone has died. Stay in the moment, in the now. Suppose it is the last day of your life. Even then you are in need of the strength to go above your reason. Have the confidence that all the evil and misery is constructive. This confidence will flow in the experience and you will see your intellect can't walk with your trust. To go above reason is a matter of more confidence than intellect. Someone from the West destroys his heart with his brain. And someone from the East destroys his brain with his heart. But both have a shortcoming in the observation of the true reality. The true reality is only to be experienced when the heart and the intellect are coming together to shalom, peace. So neither the intellect nor the feeling may overrule. The pain we feel is the missing dimension, but to, feel, but to fill the lacking in a mechanical way isn't the solution. Both have to be built up in harmony within you. Any thought that does not rhyme with the laws of the universe is misleading. 
ideas that man forms and which do not have their roots in the laws of the universe than to press up, dress up in, in his body and gain hands and feet. They become a force, monsters who secretly feed themselves sweetly from his creative powers. The fact is that an idea after having infused into the human head cannot, under the conditions of our world, exist separately without a coarsened casing, a housing, like air trapped in a balloon. An idea searches so a body to settle there. False ideas and concepts acquire a shell due to any to due to one paying attention to them, fixing on them, attracting them to one's body, in one's desires. Untreated forces looking for the right shells to false ideas and concepts, which suck the creative forces of a man and absorb them into these shells. This is why we must be very careful in relation to ideas coming to you. Know that around your that around you are legions of forces designed to capture your, your attention and get in you or get you in. So be very cautious with all sorts of ideas. If some idea caught your eye, do not let it enter at once in yourself, but check thoroughly whether it has the appropriate root in the laws of the universe. And if this is not, and yet you are interested in, then you yourself are asking for problems. For this idea, wrapped in the shell, will start to live in you its own life. Such ideas that are penetrated in you will certainly take care of all kinds of structural abnormalities in every situation and every decision taken by you. After all, they feed themselves on your errors. <clears throat> Rules for asking questions to yourself and to others. There's a principle. Before you ask a question to yourself or to others, there has to be an inner attitude of unconditional justification of the control system of the universe. You have to have a desire, and your orientations have to go beyond the reason, meaning your confidence has to be far more than your intellect. Your question may not come from your intellect or from the need of, of the material. Don't let your question be an intellectual one, to know for the knowing. But the question has to bring you closer to your goal. The questions you have will bring you closer in agreement with the laws of the universe. Nevertheless, it has to be a question familiar for others. They should have an idea of the subject. The questions are, you're asking here in the course have to be in agreement with the subject of the training and not otherwise. And these questions have to come from an absolute love. It has to be an uplifting and in no way to, humi to humiliate others what, or, or whatsoever. Overcome the habit to ask questions only for showing others how intelligent or good you are. Or maybe because you only want some attention or other unclean intentions, and the worst of them are the questions asked with skepticism. Maybe it is better to be silent and to concentrate yourself in listening. Consider what is more wise, to be in silence or to open your mouth. There is a saying of a wise man, all the days of my life I was under the greatest wise man, and the best thing to do was to be silent. Only when you are 100% certain you feel it from deep within, and the question is in agreement with the advice given to you, you may ask a question. Your Kabbalah teacher will not give a simple answer with yes or no. He will give an answer for you to orientate. His answer must bring you in confusion. The effort has to be done by you, and the solution lies within. Every person has to find the answers to his own questions. The teacher only gives a direction. The confirmation has to come from your own roots. Never take the opinion of your teacher for granted. There has to be a phase of digestion within the structure of your unique personal being. <clears throat> 